What is something that is normalized in Europe yet is a completely unknown concept in the US. Prices already includes taxes. I've lived in Australia most of my life, but I spent a few years living in the US when I was young. I vividly remember having saved up for a Wii game I wanted, going down to the electronics store with my $50 note, and trying to buy the game with a $50 sticker on it, only to get to the counter and find out that it actually secretly cost more than that, and the guy at the checkout was pretty rude about it too. I had to go home empty-handed cause I didn't know enough about US taxes when I was 12. I feel you. I saved 1000 bucks for TV, and at checkout, I found myself seeing $100 taxes. That's absurd lol. I think it's designed so that you dislike taxes. Or to disconnect the seller from the government's taxes. Here in Europe we just pay the price and move on, while the receipt has the details on taxes. Good luck explaining to Americans that taxes aren't just an adult mythical creature that sneaks into your wallet while you sleep. Hello! Want to learn something cool that Europeans do, that Americans have no idea about? Well, it's a secret, but if you hit that subscribe button and drop your answer below, I promise to spill the beans in my next video. Trust me, it's mind-blowing. Bathroom doors with no gaps. Those are gaining a little bit of traction here in the States and I'm so glad. Walked into a Bucky's bathroom on the way south earlier this summer. I could have cried tears of joy that the stalls were individual toilet rooms with full-size doors. Makes for a lot less awkward poops when the store accidentally puts dairy in your drink. This completely baffled me on my US trip. It's not just in this or that location which had a construction error or really had to go for the cheapest option, it's virtually everywhere. Why do Americans want to watch each other shit? Even their co-workers in a nice office building? I'd love to understand. So apparently bathroom doors with no gaps in Europe are like Bigfoot sightings in the US. You hear about them, but no one actually believes they exist. Coalition governments. As an American, this wins for sure. Everything else I've seen is self-explanatory but this is a truly alien concept. Can you Eli 5 in American terms? Imagine there are not two, but five, or more, parties in the parliament. Some share similar goals, others don't. After an election, usually no party has a majority in the parliament. Instead the parties have talks to find out which combination shares the most goals they want to achieve and form a government together. When Americans hear about coalition governments, they get as confused as a vegan at a barbecue joint. You know, like trying to explain the difference between haggis and a deep-fried Snickers bar. Tips are optional. This. I went to a bakery in the US recently to buy one loaf of bread, and at the end of this one-minute exchange, the girl at the counter turned her iPad around to ask for a tip. WTF? Hey someone's gotta pay the employees and it sure as hell ain't gonna be the business owner slash s. You can remove slash s. Yeah but tips should be earned. I'm fine with filling a waiter but tipping a bakery worker that just grabbed it out the oven, not a fan. I'll save more money on tips in Europe than all the money I've saved throughout my entire life. I'm basically a European financial genius now. 6 weeks vacation. Edit, it's actually 6-6 six, six for most places. Getting sick and not using vacation days. Getting sick on vacation and using a doctor's note to get the vacation days back. Getting sick on vacation and using a doctor's note to get the vacation days back. OMG, seriously? That's awesome, and I didn't even know it was a thing anywhere. Trains. Cries in severely gutted Irish rail network. I really liked Irish trains whenever I used them. Granted, they are slow but the country is quite small so that's okay. Also, there are enough lines and it's comparably cheap. You can't really expect to have a good train connection to these small towns there are. You can't really expect to have a good train connection to these small towns there are. Ireland had a much bigger rail network though. Compare what was present 100 years ago and what is available now. If that had been maintained, we'd be making constant incremental improvements and would have an amazing network. Trains in Europe are like unicorns in the US, except unicorns run on time and don't smell like fast food. DD slash M slash IE. I just encountered this one yesterday from a colleague located in Germany. She asked me to relay a message to a colleague here in the US as she was logging off for the day. As part of her message, she included the term CW34. 
I had never heard that before and she was logged off before I could ask for clarification. Upon googling the term, I realized she meant the 34th calendar week of the year. I was blown away. To be fair, while we typically know what calendar wosh means, only some of us regularly work with this. It happens all the time in my team that a stakeholder asks whether we can deliver something by CW21, and we all open the Outlook calendar to translate that into something that makes sense to us. It's a bit like pregnant couples talking in weeks. I understand the concept, but I can't really think in weeks beyond a certain number. I can't even count how many times I've tried to explain to Americans that the calendar goes from little to big numbers, but it's like trying to explain quantum physics to a goldfish. Here in Europe you don't have to tip people for doing their job. Yes, because we pay them a living wage by law. Including health care. Sad Italian noises. In some places in Europe you have to tip the janitor to use the toilet. I'm telling you, in Europe, I feel like I've joined an elite secret society where we all fulfill our duty by withholding tips like a covert organization of frugal ninjas. Taking your own shopping bags to the supermarket. Totally normalized in all European countries as far as I know. Or buy a, firm, shopping bag at the store if you don't have one with you. All those plastic bags in US stores, so small that it can only hold two cans of milk so you see customers with a dozen plastic bags for their groceries. Unthinkable in Europe. More people are day drinking in Europe than I have ever seen in America. I mean it's a whole different culture around alcohol you guys even have a separate verb day drinking because apparently that's different than just drinking. This was going to be my answer. Completely different culture and outlook on alcohol. I believe in the states it's viewed like addiction to alcohol rather than a regular daylight hours thing to see. In addition the drinking ages we have are lower or far more relaxed depending on country. Same situation with nudity and sex. Not all nudity is sexual inherently. In my country we are not ashamed of nudity nor immediately correlate it with sex. It's not unusual to see nudity in public parks, newspapers, TV, shared public showering nude after swimming nude, advertising, too many examples I can't even think of them all as it's normal to us, and highly shocking to Americans to outrage. Definition of hypocrisy, Americans are so stunned, baffled or revolted by European openness on nudity yet more than 90% of porn worldwide comes from the USA itself. I never realized how much Europe loves their day drinking until I visited, it's like they invented a whole new meal called alcohunch. Legally enshrined right to online privacy. Not just privacy but the constitutional right to informational self-determination. This means you have the right to decide what happens to your information including your likeness and who is allowed to have it. Even if you've given it before, you have the right to demand to have the information about you be erased. That's why Facebook has huge issues in Germany because German judges don't fuck around when it comes to the right to informational self-determination. That's amazing. We are still trying to get our government officials to understand the internet. I don't know if you've seen any of the congressional hearings about anything computer-related. It's embarrassing and frightening the stupidity that was in display. Sadly, we don't have any chance of protecting our rights anytime soon. Trying to explain European online privacy to Americans is like trying to explain the concept of soccer without using the words touchdown or quarterback. Good luck with that. Uncut cocks. Read this as socks and was very confused. Works for me as well, I don't cut my socks. Most of the socks are uncut as well. I never thought I'd say this, but trying to explain to Americans the concept of biscuit meaning cookie in Europe is like explaining why uncut music is better. They just won't get it. Paying to use a toilet. But not paying to use a hospital. So hospitals are free toilets? No, we have McDonald's for that. You use McDonald as hospitals? I never realized how spoiled I was with my free bathroom privileges until I had to fork over some change just to take a leak in Europe. Another one, not worrying about wild animals when you're going out hiking. In most of Western Europe at least, needing to carry bear spray or whatever is just not a thing. Our wildlife such as it is is pretty tame and sadly any wilderness we have isn't really, wilderness on the scale of N America. ETA, okay, Eastern Europeans, I get the idea lol after multiple messages, I deliberately wrote most of Western Europe in the first place precisely because I know you guys have far more in the way of bears and whatnot than we do. Yeah because Europeans killed all the wildlife. Yep, and we chopped down half the trees to build ships centuries ago lol. And when you landed on Cape Cod, you cut down all the old growth forest to make ships masts. 
I'm still salty about that.